All right, the last part of this lesson is division of radical expressions, okay? Now, in order to divide uh, radical expressions, uh, you and I are going to be using a technique called rationalization. And we're going to focus in our class on rationalizing the denominator. To rationalize a denominator means to rewrite the expression so that there is no radical in the denominator. So we do not want a radical in the denominator. Now check out this first example, the square root of 12 elevenths. Now we know by the quotient rule uh, for radicals, the square root of this quotient is equivalent to the quotient of their square roots. So we can rewrite it like this. Now. The problem we have with this expression is, or maybe I should say the reason why it's not simplified, is because the denominator has a radical. So you and I want to rewrite this expression um, so that there is no more radical down here. Now, the only way that we can change this um, uh, expression, um, but without changing its value, is by multiplying by 1, right? And in order to multiply by 1, you have to make sure that you, whatever you multiply the denominator by, you multiply the numerator by the same expression. So that, they, that way this fraction that you're, or this number, this value that you're multiplying by is really just 1. Now the question here is the following. What would I multiply this denominator by here in order to get a perfect square, right? A perfect power of the index so that there are, the radical goes away. Well, watch this. If I multiplied the denominator, I want you to just notice something. If I multiply the denominator by the square root of 11, you would get the square root of 11 times the square root of 11, which is just 11, right? Um, remember, the square root of 11 times the square root of 11 is the square root of 121, which is 11. No more radical. So actually, that did it. But whatever you multiply the denominator by, make sure you multiply the numerator by that same value that same expression, so that you're really multiplying this whole expression by 1. Um, all that you have to do now is just simplify this numerator. Um, let's see. I'm going to use prime factorization here. 12 is uh, 2 times 2 times 3, and of course 11 is just 11. Your index is 2, so I'm going to right there. What I circled there is 4, right? And the square root of 4 is 2. The square root of 4 is 2, and what remains inside is the square root of, a, of 3 times 11, which is 33, and all of this is over 11. This expression here is considered simplified because the denominator um, no longer has a radical. Now I want you to be careful here. The problems that we're about to look at, please do not make the false assumption that, oh, all we have to do is multiply the denominator by itself, right? And then that'll be the, the technique every single time. That is not true. You're going to see in the very next example that it's not as easy as just multiplying the denominator by itself. And let me show you that um, in the next example. We have 7 over the cube root of 3. So again, the question becomes, what do I multiply the uh, denominator by so that this radical here, this cube root really, goes away? I don't want a radical in the denominator. Now, if I think that all I have to do is multiply the denominator by itself, I'm going to be wrong. Watch what would happen in this case if you multiply the denominator by itself. The cube root of 3 times the cube root of 3 by the product rule, that would be the cube root of 3 times 3, which is 9. 9 is not a perfect cube. It's a perfect square, but it's not a perfect cube. So this is irrational. Uh, the cube root of 9 is irrational. The radical does not go anywhere here. So multiplying the denominator by itself did not work. So really the question uh, becomes, what do I multiply this denominator by in order to get a perfect cube? Remember one of your perfect cubes, I'm thinking about my perfect cubes in my mind right now, and one of them is 27. So if I multiply this denominator by the cube root of 9, that would give me that perfect cube of the cube root of 
27 because 3 times 9 is 27. And so now the cube root of 27 is just 3. So that's what did it. So it's really thinking about it's really thinking about what would I multiply 3 by in order to get a perfect power of this index. In other words, what do I multiply 3 by in order to get a perfect cube? I know 27 is a perfect cube, so there you go right there. I, you have to know your perfect cubes in order to do this kind of work. If I multiply 3 by 9, I'll get 27, which happens to be a perfect cube, and then the denominator no longer has a radical. Now let's go back and fill in the pieces here. If you multiply the denominator by the cube root of 9, you're going to have to multiply the numerator by the cube root of 9 as well. Now, um, the numerator is just 7 times the cube root of 9. That, that, that's already simplified because 9 is not a perfect cube, uh, neither does it have a factor um, that is a perfect cube, so this is fully simplified. This next example um, uh, wants us to rationalize the denominator of the square root of 6a squared b to the fifth divided by the square root of 3a cubed b. Now, I think what might be easier for us to do is to use, before we rationalize, uh, before we rationalize, let's simplify this first, and then the rationalization will be easier. Now, if I use the quotient rule for radicals, um, that tells me that the quotient of these square roots is equivalent to the square root of their quotient. So I have the square root of 6a squared b to the fifth divided by 3 a cubed b. Now what happens here as a result is I get the square root of, now actually let me rewrite that, the square root of 6 divided by 3, 6 divided by 3 is 2, right? And then look at this, you have a squared in the numerator divided by a cubed in the denominator. That's going to leave you with, well, both of these, this is a times a, right, everybody? And this is a times a times a. You know what? Let me show you that. The numerator, you have a times a. That's a squared. The denominator is a cubed, so you have a times a times a. So these two a's will divide out with those two a's. You'll be left with one a, but that one a is in the denominator, okay? Um, accidentally got rid of that. All right, there's that a. Now notice that you have b to the fifth up here and just one b down here. That means it'll simplify to b to the fourth in the numerator. All right, so that's what we have. Now I am going to use the um, quotient rule again to rewrite this as the square root of 2b to the fourth over the square root of a. And now I will focus on rationalizing this expression. The question becomes, what do I multiply this denominator by in order to get a perfect power of the index? Said another way, what do I multiply a by to get a perfect square? Well, if you multiply a, the square root of a by the square root of a, by itself basically, um, you're going to get the square root of a squared, which is just a. The radical, the square root, will go away. So then... The denominator is just a. The numerator is the square root of 2, um, a, b to the fourth. So you're just about done, except you can evaluate the square root of b to the fourth. Remember, 4 divided by 2, I'm pointing at the invisible index, is 2. So then the numerator simplifies as b squared times the square root of 2a all over a. This is the simplified um, expression. Okay, this is your answer. For this next example that they want us to rationalize, um, for which they want us to rationalize the denominator, I'm going to go for the same approach. I am going to simplify first and then rationalize. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the denominator here. Instead of the square root of 24, I'll rewrite it as the square root of 4 times the square root of 6, times the square root of x to the fifth. Okay, I'm going to simplify that. Now, um, the numerator is 5. The square root of 4 is 2, so I'll write a 2 out front. 
and then I'll have the square root of 6, okay? But hold on. Um, 5 divided by 2, let me show that to you really quick. 5 divided by 2, that's the power of 5 divided by the index. We all know that 2 goes into 5 twice, right? Um, with a remainder of 1. So then this simplifies as x squared, and then you'll have x to the first power inside. So then this denominator simplifies as a square root of 6, uh, 2x squared times the square root of 6x, okay? Um, all right, cool that. Let me get rid of this to create some space for us. Now, let's continue. The question now becomes, let me come over here. The question now becomes, what do I multiply this expression in the denominator by in order to get 6x to be a perfect power of the index. In this case, it's a perfect square. If I multiplied 6x by itself, 6x, I will get 36x squared, which is a perfect square. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to multiply by the square root of 6x, of course, in the numerator and in the denominator. The numerator becomes 5 times the square root of 6x. The denominator becomes 2x squared times just 6x, because the square root of 6x times the square root of 6x is just 6x, right? So then what we get here is 5 times the square root of 6x all over uh, 12x cubed. And this is the simplified um, form of that expression. All right, so we have the cube root of 2 divided by the cube root of 5a squared. Let's be clear. The radical in the numerator does not bother us. It's the radical in the denominator. Now, your index is 3, so I want you to think about what your perfect cubes are. Now, the question becomes, what will I multiply? Now, we know it'll be the cube root of something, right? Hold on, let me fill that in really quickly. All right, there. So really, the question boils down to, what do I multiply 5? Let's just talk about 5 first. What do I multiply 5 by in order to get a perfect cube? Now go to your list of perfect cubes. I have you. I hope you have a list by now. Go to your list of perfect cubes. What can you multiply 5 by in order to get one of those perfect cubes in your list? Do you see 125 in your list of perfect cubes? If you multiply 5 by 25, you will get 125, which is a perfect cube. Furthermore, if you multiply a squared by a, you will end up having a cubed, which is a perfect cube. So that's how I'm thinking, everybody. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator by the cube root of 25a. So the numerator, you end up getting the cube root of, by the product rule for radicals, 2 times 25 is 50, and then you have an a. The denominator is the cube root of 5 times 25, which is 125, and then a squared times a, which is a cubed. The numerator, um, it, it is what it is. Nothing happens there because 50 um, is not a perfect cube, and it doesn't have a factor that's a perfect cube either. But the denominator, the cube root of 125 is 5, and the cube root of a cubed is just a. So this is the simplified form of that expression. One more like this, okay? The fourth root of 7 divided by the fourth root of 4t. Now, please go to your list of perfect fourths. If you're like, I don't, I don't have a, per a list of per my perfect fourths. Well, pause the lesson and make a list of just a few. I'm, I'm telling you, just a few of your perfect fourths. Now, the question becomes, what am I going to multiply by, right? Um, let me get the fourth roots ready. Um, the question really becomes, what do I multiply 4 by in order to get a perfect fourth? Now, look at your list of perfect fourths. Do you see that 16 is one of your perfect fourths? Well, if you multiply 4 by 4, you're going to get 16, which is one of your perfect fourths. So that's what I'm going to multiply 4 by. 
and then t multiplied by t cubed will end up being t to the fourth power, which is a perfect fourth. So I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by the fourth root of 4t four cubed. All right, so the numerator becomes, by the product rule for radicals, it says the fourth root of 7 times 4, which is 28, t cubed. The denominator becomes the fourth root of 4 times 4, which is 16, t times t cubed, which is t to the fourth. The numerator is what it is. There's 28 is not a perfect fourth, and 28 does not have a factor that's a perfect fourth. So it is what it is. But the denominator, the fourth root of 16 is 2. And the fourth root of t to the fourth is just t. This is the simplified form of that expression. All right, this is the last example, example 9, okay? Um, but I'll show you two um, different kinds of this problem, okay? So example 9a and then example 9b. Now, this expression is different. Um, it's 3 divided by the square root of 5 minus 1. What makes this different than all of the other division ones uh, and all the other division problems is that the denominator has two terms, okay? So we're going to have to change up our strategy. Now, the strategy here is to multiply the numerator and denominator. Um, but, you know, we're going to multiply by 1 in the form of the conjugate of the denominator. So what we're going to do is multiply the numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator. And let me show you what we mean by that. The conjugate of the denominator is basically just the opposite operation. I didn't say opposite. I said opposite operation. So instead of the square root of 5 minus 1, it'll be the square root of 5 plus 1. So you get the, uh, the, uh, the conjugate by just changing what this operation here is. Had this been plus, then this would be minus, right? But they started out with minus, so we change it to plus. That's the conjugate. Now, if you multiply the denominator by the conjugate, uh, if you multiply the denominator by the square root of 5 plus 1, uh, you have to do the same thing to the numerator so that you are indeed multiplying this expression by 1, right? All right, here we go. All we have to do now distribute this 3, right? And then we're going to distribute that, uh, the denominator as well. All right, so let me move this down. I think I'm going to need a little more space here. All right, here we go. The numerator, 3 times the square root of 5. That's 3 times the square root of 5. Plus 3 times 1. That's just 3. Now the denominator, uh, the square root of 5 times the square root of 5. Well, that's just 5. The square root of 5 times positive 1. That's the square root of 5. Now, negative 1 times the square root of 5. That's negative square root of 5. And then finally, negative 1 times positive 1. That's negative 1. Now, pay close attention. Notice how these two terms are opposites. Whenever you multiply a radical expression by its conjugate, these middle terms will always cancel out. Basically, the radical, um, the irrational terms will cancel out every single time. And all you'll be left with is, what is this, 5 minus 1, which is 4. You'll be left with a rational number every single time. Please watch out for that pattern. There's the numerator. The denominator is 5 minus 1 which is 4. This is the simplified form of this expression because it is rationalized. All right, last example. Please um, do not think that you can just cross cancel here, the square root of x for the square root of x, square root of 3 time, uh, over the square root of 3. We never cross cancel between terms. We can only cross cancel or divide out common factors, right? And these are not factors, they're not being multiplied, right? You see subtraction and addition. So these are terms, right? So you can't just say, oh, cross cancel and then cross cancel can do that. Now, another um, false move is to think that the numerator and denominator are opposites. They're not opposites. Um, if they were opposites, you know, this positive square root of x, 
um, the opposite of the square root of x is negative square root of x, and that's not what you have down here, okay? All right, now guys, the fact that the denominator has two terms, right? Just like the previous problem, example 9, part a, whenever you have two terms in the denominator, you have to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. Now, the conjugate of the square root of x plus the square root of 3 is a square root of x minus a square root of 3. Now, you have to do the same thing to the numerator and to the denominator, all right? Now, you know what we're going to do. We're going to distribute. Let me work on the denominator uh, first, and then I'll focus on the, uh, the numerator next. Now, um, you can save yourself some time if you remember what I said about the middle, uh, the, the, the radical terms uh, canceling. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. The square root of x times the square root of x is just x. Now here we go. The square root of x times negative square root of 3 is negative the square root of 3x. Positive square root of 3 times positive square root of x is positive the square root of 3x. See, that's what I mean. These two terms are opposites. Again, you can always count on that happening. The square root of 3 times negative square root of 3 is just negative 3, right? Negative 3. And just like I said earlier, you can count on these two terms canceling each other out, leaving you with just x minus 3. Now let's go to the numerator, okay? Square root of x times square root of x, square root of x times negative root 3, and then this is getting sloppy now, negative root 3 times root x, negative root 3 times negative root 3. All right, negative, I'm sorry, excuse me, root x times root x is just x. And then square root of x times negative root 3 is negative root 3x by the product rule for radicals. And then you have, again, negative root 3 times root x. That's another negative root 3x. Be careful. These are not opposites. Like these were down here were opposites. These are not opposites, so they don't, they don't cancel. Negative root 3 times negative root 3 is positive 3. All right, so what we need to do now is we need to combine these two terms. Don't cancel them. Add them together. Remember, you keep the common radical part, and you just add their coefficients. So then you get x minus 2 root 3x plus 3, right? Remember that 3 out there. Now this is a negative 1 minus 1, so that's negative 2, all right? The denominator is simply just x minus 3. Now that's the best you can do. This is simplified form. Now, please do not think you could cross cancel these threes. No, 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 no. You cannot cross, cross cancel these x's. Again, we don't cross cancel between terms. We only cross cancel between factors. Now, this business of multiplying by the conjugate of the denominator, write this in your notes. You always multiply by the conjugate of the denominator whenever you have two terms in the denominator.